Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is McQueeb. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Today, we're going to take a look at the full version of Loop Hero. Special thanks to Devolver Digital for allowing me early access to the game and allowing me to show it off on my YouTube channel. Folks, sit back, relax, as we dive into some of the differences between the Loop Hero demo and the full game. First things first, if you've played the demo, you've probably invested already a few hours at least. And what you may not know is that your save data will carry over from the demo into the full game. Let's take a look at the expedition menu to begin. So we currently have uh, three tiles over here and I'll explain them as we go through. On the left, you'll find the deck building menu in here is each of the cards that I've currently unlocked. And you unlock those by meeting certain requirements. Most of them are unlocked by placing town upgrades. What you will see is that I've selected some and deselected others. If you didn't pick this up in the demo, you're only allowed a certain number of cards as you do a run. So we have 12 selected at the moment out of a maximum of 15 and a minimum of seven. Uh, and I'm finding that the build that I currently have available is pretty safe. It's a pretty great build just to get started. Good for farming as well. Uh, one thing you may not have seen before is this down here. This is considered a gold card. It's a very special card and you start the game with one of these. As soon as you place it on the ground, it changes the game mode ever so slightly. So it is a little bit of risk reward. This particular one is called Ancestral Crypt. The text is uh, the final resting place of an ancient family line. Death and the lessons it teaches are honored here. Plus three HP for every enemy with a soul killed. It removes HP bonus from armor and grants you one resurrection upon dying. So it's risky in that any class with an armor attribute or an or an HP bonus attribute gained by wearing equipment uh, is negated. So for example, the warrior, the, the starting class, uh, his armor actually comes with an amount of health. That would be reduced down to zero. And the only way to gain additional HP is by placing um, the mountain tiles and, and stone tiles and also by killing enemies with a soul. From what I can tell, slimes, ghosts, and the mimics, the chests that you can spawn, do not have souls. So everything else is okay, including vampires, which I find rather amusing. It's, uh, it's quite good, and particularly for classes without armor to begin with, it's kind of amazing. So I pair this with a necromancer build I had. Absolutely incredible card. That means every... Enemy with a soul I killed, I gained a permanent health upgrade. Fortunately, during the run that I tried this on, I didn't die. But if I did, I would get uh, granted one additional life there. Next, you can see the different classes. We've unlocked two at this stage. We've unlocked the Rogue as well as the Necromancer. Each one plays completely differently. Now, one thing from the demo that we were all curious about is the equipment being used, right? We thought that with the warrior, you had a sword, a ring, a shield, and some armor, and perhaps the other items that were listed were not available during the demo only. As it turns out, it's class-based. So if you switch classes, like to the rogue, for example, you can see that now we don't use any rings whatsoever, and we've got uh, a set of boots unlocked, as well as a second sword this character dual wields then the necromancer completely different again we don't get hp from armor instead the necromancer has uh what's called uh, a magic hp it's kind of like a, an hp bubble shield this is the same screen as well where you are able to switch between chapters as you can see uh chapter one enemies have zero to one abilities enemy strength minus five percent chapter two this changes back to more of a, a natural state now. So we are getting levels that increase in difficulty. And then during those levels, 
the game obviously gets harder as you progress as well. And on top of that, you have different sorts of cards to use, different character classes. The number of permutations here is unbelievably massive. And uh, I can see myself playing this game for a very, very, very long time. Switching over to the build menu now, you can start to see a lot more of what uh, you can upgrade the town with. So previously, I think we were restricted to pretty much just the gymnasium, I think, and the smithy. I think everything else, uh, maybe the farm. I can't even remember if the smelter was available. But everything else above that was all locked off. And then unlocking each of these increases the amount of things you can do in the game. Uh, it unlocks usability for certain uh, items and uh, resources that you pick up. Uh, you can even unlock different resource types. I'm about 25 hours in at the moment and I've only just scratched the surface. You're talking about hundreds of hours of gameplay if you want to go through the whole thing. The difficulty is definitely part of that. It's not a game to be taken lightly. And uh, once you dive in, I think it's going to be uh, wonderful what builds people come up with and the amount of community engagement that will be part of that. So on the statistics screen, you can see uh, each one of your fights, the best results you've had, the longest you've lasted, the number of cards you've placed, etc, etc, etc. It's very, very deep. Next, we have the supply menu. Now, this one's extremely interesting. You'll notice uh, each one of these slots. So we've got furniture, tools, food, and jewelry at the moment. There may be more coming. I can't answer that just yet. Uh, we have a few items in here. Now, these are sort of items that I've either created or found. We'll get into the creation process in a little bit. We can then sort of uh, attach them to the town. We give them to the town. Those are additional stats or perks that are active during any run. So you might have a specific build that you're looking for, or you want to use a different character class and that can benefit from different attributes you come to this screen and sort of rework things a little bit. So for example, currently I have equipped an antique shelf plus one to max HP for every resource gained during this expedition. So it's a nice little passive increase in HP over the course of a run. We've got the farmer's scythe. In fact, I have two of these. So 5% chance to receive one ration while passing through a wheat field. 3% of damage becomes damage to all. That's kind of cool. The great thing is it does stack. If we check up here, you'll notice that the third line down, 10% chance to receive one ration while passing through a wheat field, 6% of damage becomes damage to all. So straight away, that's a, that's a great little buff, uh, especially for those uh, difficult situations where you're fighting more than one enemy at a time. Uh, in the food menu, we have a couple of cheeses. Uh, plus one HP after killing an enemy. Now we get that twice, which is really good. That's a heal. It doesn't add to our maximum. It, it just increases our uh, health available at the moment. Any extra health you can pick up along the way, amazing. Meat stew, receive an additional five HP while passing through a village. Now I've specced into villages pretty heavily with wheat fields, villages, and vampire mansions. Uh, so that sort of all works together with this every time I pass through a village, every time I pass through a wheat field, we get an, an additional something. And then down here we have the brass candlestick. The hero's damage is increased by 5% when he is in range of a road lantern or a beacon. Pretty good as well. Um, an extra 5 damage and I do use road lanterns quite effectively also. Now all of these items down here, we've found them either during our quest so you'll just find one randomly or on the off chance that you would prefer to build stuff you can do that as well and that takes us to our crafting menu so this particular uh resource right here is called metamorphosis the world's ability to change and transform was carefully detached from its existence put into an orb and destroyed it's nice that it isn't irreversible. So to build the tools, we need metal. And then to build food, we need 
rations. Now I've got a couple of these. I was saving them, but let's let's build something just so I can sort of demo that for you. Uh, we want to go to the craft side of things. And straight away we built mixed nuts, which I've actually already got. Plus two max HP for every point of armor the hero has. Now, because I have two mixed nuts here, I could essentially stack those together and if we then uh, go into sort of a class that can get the armor stat, we could go pretty out of control with that. That's a whole bunch of extra HP. Uh, so that's one of the things that you could potentially do there. And finally, we have the encyclopedia menu. Now this is kind of like your journal, right? So everything that can be seen in the game sort of gets a record in here. You can see the different types of cards. You can see different types of enemies. There's slimes, mimics, blood clots. There's a different sorts of ghosts right there. You've got different resources here. And then the things you place in town, uh, which we've already been through. Pretty great. One thing I would like to see is specifically with the types of land cards that are available how to make some of the more advanced ones there's no recipes in here or confirmation of that once you've sort of discovered what that recipe is now that might come later with some upgrades to the town system cannot confirm or deny at the moment but uh, i think you'll agree it's pretty deep again i'm only about 20 25 hours into the game only just scratched the surface. Look at my town. It's still pretty tiny. Um, I still have a bunch of things to build. Uh, obviously, these ones aren't available at all yet because we haven't unlocked the prerequisite for that. But I'm super excited. I'm going to keep playing this game. One of the great things I love most about this game is just how relaxed an atmosphere it is. Because you can pause at any moment, it allows me to sort of interact with chat. We get to have really cool conversations whilst I'm playing. Definitely uh, would love to have you swing by over at twitch.tv slash McQueeb. You'll catch me most nights after 6 p.m. Pacific. It's been an absolute pleasure to host you today. As always, take it easy, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.